So looking at trig still, uh, this time we're going to be solving for an unknown angle. Now you can see in big words I've written here revision. Now none of this is really going to be getting tested in any real way uh, this term, but that's really, really, uh, that's irrelevant at this point. You really need this stuff still though, uh, because without this piece of knowledge, everything that comes after it, you're just not going to be able to do. So just jumping through this one really quickly. Cos theta equals root 3 on 2 if 0 is less than theta, which is less than 2 pi. So, in other words, we need to know what theta is. We know that it's between 0 and 2 pi. That's between um, 0 and 360 degrees. And we know that cos theta is equal to root 3 on 2. Now, the way that I would go about this, now you should, using your standard triangles, be able to pretty quickly work out that cos, here it is, cos pi on 6 is equal to root 3 on 2. Okay, so uh, you can either use your standard triangles or you can use like a table uh, like this one to work it out. So we know that if cos theta equals root 3 on 2, then theta equals cos theta equals root 3 on 2, then theta equals pi on 6. Now, of course, that's only one of many answers. Uh, theta actually has an infinite number of values, but the thing that stops us from having an infinite number of values is this boundary here. We can see that theta has to be between 0 and 2 pi. So here's my unit circle. Now remember your C, A, S, T. Now you can see that cos theta equals positive root 3 on 2. So if it's a positive cos value we're dealing with, that means that it must exist in either this quadrant or this quadrant, the, the cos quadrant, the fourth quadrant, or the all quadrant, the one that, which makes them all positive. So that means that our angle is going to exist here as pi on 6. Sorry, that's not very well done. There, as pi on 6, I'll just change colors because this one's more important. Or here, as pi on 6. Now, of course, we don't measure angles from the x-axis downwards. Um, we need to measure that angle all the way around the circle. So, in other words, we need to know what this angle is. And it's pretty easy to work that one out. Uh, we know that the whole, the whole way around the circle will be 2 pi. And we know that this little purple bit here is pi on 6, so 2 pi minus pi on 6. Now you guys can uh, type that into your calculator or come up with some sort of answer for that. Uh, that should be, that'll be 11 pi on 6. Okay, so now we have two answers. We know that theta equals pi on 6 or 11 pi on 6. So two answers. You can see I've just sort of done this in the margins here. Uh, it's enough to show how much working should we really show here. I'll get rid of that. It's really enough to show that you've done this step and you've drawn your unit circle. You really don't want to neglect drawing in your unit circle so you can show that you visualized it and you understand that theta can have two answers, this answer in the first quadrant and this answer in the fourth quadrant. So one more example before we go on with this. Uh, this is really something you're going to have to practice a lot. Remember, it is something you learned in grade 11. Uh, here's our example. Sine theta equals negative root 2 on 2. The only difference here is sine instead of cos and this negative, which is probably the more important bit. Uh, all the rules still apply, though. So you should be able to jump into your table or use your unit... unit um, where are they? Or use... making a real mess here. Or use your standard triangles to come up with what the answer is. Use my table because it's a little quicker if I can come up with where it is. Okay, uh, sine theta equals negative root 2 on 2. We can see that root 2 on 2, it's going to be pi on 4. Now, we need to be careful here. Theta is equal to 
let's draw our unit circle first. We know that our reference angle is pi on 4, but we also know that it's going to be a negative C-A-S-T. Now that means that our angle, because it's sine, it must exist in either the tan quadrant or the cosine quadrant in order to be negative. So it's going to exist here. Uh, it's pi on 4, so it's a 45 degree angle. Pi on 4 there, or it's going to exist here as pi on 4. Uh, now, one quick way that I, I like to do this is to count off. Because it's 45 degrees, it's nice and easy. Pi on 4, 2 pi on 4, 3 pi on 4, 4 pi on 4, 5 pi on 4 is going to be one of variances. And I can do that whole thing again. 5 pi on 4, 6 pi on 4, 7 pi on 4 is going to be our second. Um, of course, I'm assuming that the boundary is between 0 and 2 pi. Now, if I did assume that, you'd have to start looking elsewhere. So, for example, if we took the same question and we said that the boundary was between negative 2 pi and 0, we need to start looking for um, angles, uh, negative angles. So those two negative angles, if it's between negative 2 pi, so that's negative 360 degrees, remember that would turn you around this way. So our two negative angles are going to be this one here, so that's negative pi on 4, or this one here, negative pi and 4, negative 2 pi and 4, negative 3 pi and 4. Now again, uh, this is a lot of uh, revision, I hope. Uh, I'm going to put a worksheet up because it's not really in your textbook, this particular stuff. Have a try at the worksheet. If you're having trouble with it, you need to talk to me because you need to have a one-on-one -on -one and come up with a way to fix it up. All right, thanks guys.